components of a computer. So a computer has components that we're going to understand and the terminologies that will be there are for important for our understanding. So a computer, as was explained, is simply an electronic device that manipulates information or data and has the ability to store, retrieve, and process the data. So computers come in many shapes, sizes, and also perform different functionalities. So the hardware contains the software. The software has the operating system. So now the operating system has the objectives as follows. It makes a computer convenient to use in an efficient manner to hide the details of the hardware resources from the users. And also the software operating system is also able to provide the users with convenient interface to use the computer system. The objectives of the operating system basically are to act as an intermediary between the hardware, which is the physical part of the computer and its users, making it easier for us to access the resources on it. The other objective of the operating system is to manage the resources of the computer system. The operating system also has the objective of keeping track of who is using what resource and granting the resource requests and also mediating conflicts that may in the background request for different programs. So the operating system also provide an efficient and fair sharing resource among the users of the programs. So it splits the memory amongst uh, the different applications that are running in the process. So all types of computers will follow the same structure that has five basic operations. Number one, to take input. So all computers will take data through uh, the input devices by allowing it to receive and then store and process data. So all computers, even a calculator has its malfunction of saving information instruction that is available for processing when it is required. It is also available to process the data using what we call the ALU, the arithmetic logic unit, which is a, which is a computer calculator of the computer or the PC to convert them into useful information. So computers also have an output uh, functionality of processing information into what the user can print out or see on the screen. Lastly, computers have a functionality of control, which directs the workload in a sequential manner in which they should be performed. So this is the basic outline of a computer. It has an input unit, which include the mouse, the touchpad, the um, keyboard, and other input devices like a microphone would have a scanner, which gets information. And the CPU has three parts. We have the memory unit, which stores information. We have the control unit, which processes the data with an arithmetic unit, which calculates the data. Then output devices emanate from the output unit. So we have speakers, we have printers, we have um, um, disks where we can burn out CDs, etc. Those are all part of the output. So these are the components that define a computer. The input gets or receives data. The CPU has a processing part which receives instructions and processes certain information. The memory part stores data which would be needed for processing or storage and finally conveys it into uh, the output devices. And so the components of a computer are defined in six um, components, input devices, the processor, the memory, the output devices, storage devices, and the communication devices. So the processor, memory, and storage are all housed in a box-like case, which we call the CPU. Collectively, we call that the system unit. Peripherals are simply devices that are connected to the computer. These peripherals may include speakers, uh, portable keyboard, mouse, all these that are connected to the CPU are called peripherals. And so input devices are simply devices that are hardware in nature that will help you input data into the CPU, like a keyboard, stylus, a mouse, 
a touchpad. The keyboard is simply the one we usually see with characters, with letters, symbols, numbers. Stylus is a metallic plastic or pen which we use to input our written information. The mouse is simply a pointing device that is portably fused into uh, the CPU or the laptop that navigates the screen. The screen is called the workspace that we have. So these are input devices that we are familiar with. Touchpad, mouse. All right. So the central processing unit is considered as a brain of the computer. It performs all types of processing tasks by storing data, processing data, and also controlling the operations. So it has three key parts. We have the CPU itself, which has all the three elements, the LLU, so the arithmetic logic unit that does the calculations, the memory, which stores the data, the control, which does the processing. So the central processing unit is divided into four basic functionalities or steps to fetch data, to decode, to execute, and to write back. So fetching in this case implies retrieving information as per instruction. Decoding is simply breaking down huge volumes of data into smaller parts and uh, executing simply performing the operation as implied by the instruction and write back simply gives back the results as per memory instruction. So the CPU has the main role of processing the information into an electronic circuit that as the following uh, cycle. So I'll fetch information, decode it, break it down, execute it, and store. So this is what we call the fetch execute cycle. So the control unit is a core unit of the computer which manages the functionality of the computer. It collects the data being used as input, then leads it into processing. Once that is done, retrieves the information as output for the user to interpret as information. So the CPU or the control unit has a role of processing, basically. The ALU, as the name suggests, is simply the mathematical part of the computer which performs functions like comparisons, decision-making, analysis, manipulation, subtraction, division, and all numerical tasks. The memory unit, on the other hand, is simply centered on saving data into the memory part which you call a central processing unit, because with this, it's able to transmit data for further analysis in the CPU. It has the RAM and the ROM. These parts have the duty of storing data. The RAM is simply a small, light, volatile-sized uh, chip, which works on um, uh, power. Once the power is um, off, it also goes off, it has a short memory. Whereas ROM is a non-volatile primary uh, storage that needs huge programs that are stored, especially by the manufacturer. It has both primary and secondary storages. And also we have the cache memory, which is extremely fast type of memory that acts as a buffer between the RAM and the CPU. So this is how the cache memory operates. So we also have the motherboard, which has sockets in which we fuse in the memory chips, the memory, all these connectors here. We have the power supply, the sockets for the RAM, and all these um, uh, points. The clock generated the BIOS also sits on this motherboard. The output unit also consists of devices that help the users get information that uh, is processed after in being inputted. So we have different types of output devices, such as the printer, speakers, which come out in these forms. And so the central processing unit collectively is called the system unit, which contains electronic components uh, as has been explained, the ALU, um, which is the calculator, the memory unit, so, and the um, CPU. So the CPU interprets 
basic instructions and also operates with the arithmetic logic unit and the memory um, unit, which consists of the RAM and the ROM. And lastly, we have the storage devices, which include the hard disk, which include the HDD and SSD. HDD simply is a hard disk drive, which has movable fans that store huge sums of uh, information in memory. These disks are, of course, being replaced today with SSD, which is a flash-like disk. Of course, they all have the function of storing data. These disks may be removable or portable, or they may be fixed within the computer unit. So basically, they are, they are meant to store information. So we also have other types of storage devices like the memory flash, which can be erased. We can fuse it in and store data. We also have the SSD, which is a solid state drive, which is a memory flash, which is stored within the CPU. So other basic terminologies we need to understand are a window, a user, a multimedia. What is a window? A window is a rectangular area on the screen that displays information. So we are working on a window. This is the window you are seeing. The so window basically has a title bar along the top, which describes the content that are being followed in the toolbar. The content is displayed on the window's remaining area. The user is you, who's the user of the information. It includes the expert and the programmers and the novices that are using this information. The multimedia is simply what is produced by the computer. Could be graphics, movies, animations, sound. Um, all these are called the multimedia, it's the output. In summary, IT is simply a terminology that helps us produce, manipulate, store, communicate, and disseminate information. Computers are electronic devices that can accept, process, produce, or store information. The different types of computers have the mainframe of the supercomputers or servers. We also have different interfaces. So this is how our second unit ends. Are there any questions?